my next topic here is how to target journals. Some of this will repeat a little bit about the nine error and seven habits because we talked about choosing journals a bit in that speech, but I'm going to go into more detail now and I want to share with you uh, some of my own experience with this and also what other researchers have mentioned in regard to how to choose a great journal where we have a high chance of publishing. We collect more than one journal right in the beginning because we want to have more than one potential customer. That's why we take this journal searching seriously. We take a couple weeks to do this in my class. And students have to go and bring back three good journals that would have a high chance to accept their paper. We have a series of questions. Journal review form. I think it's on chapter 14 of your red book that we will fill out carefully to uh, increase our chance of publishing. When we're collecting the pool, we look for keywords in our paper that match the keywords on the journal's website or in the aims and scope on the journal website. The aims and scope is a paragraph that will tell the reader or the contributor what the focus of this journal is. We'll take time to read that and understand what the journal prefers. When we find one journal that we like, we can also use the relatedness metrics on the ISI Web of Knowledge. They will have a way you can see how related one journal is based on references and keywords and citations. Frequently, if we can only find one, we can use that to identify a second and third. We will also look at our references. Where have our references published? If they published here, maybe we can publish here as well. But sometimes the papers that we cite are in very high impact journals. What can we do? Well, we will take the name of the reference, who it is that wrote the paper, and we will go to Scopus or Google Scholar, and we will see where else he published before. He's in our domain, he's our reviewer, he's close to us. If he published here, maybe we can too. We can follow in his footsteps. We can see where he previously published. Again, we can take a look at the aims and scope of the journal. We can also take a look at the editor's letter. At the end of the year, usually the editor will write a letter and he will say, this year, this was our best paper. This was not good. Here's my future direction. Here's what I want to do. By reading his letter, we can see what he's expecting. If our paper matches what he wants, great. If it doesn't, well, at least we know. First issue and last issue of a year are good for this. Also, we look at the first issue when the new editor takes over the journal. Frequently, he will write a letter talking about the new direction of the journal, what will change, what he liked, what he doesn't like. We'll take time to identify him because he's our customer, see what particularly he likes. We'll also review the journal to see if there are similar papers to ours that have been written recently because in academic, uh, when we are writing academically, we are joining a conversation. The conversation happening in the journal and when we join a conversation, we need to refer to those people who are already talking. And we need to make sure that when we refer to them, then we match what they are saying. I recently had a reviewer comment, one of my students, he sent me his paper. The reviewer, the editor said, this is not reviewer, editor said, your paper is good, but we would like you to talk to our readers. Could you cite our journal more? He said that very directly. Please cite our journal more. Now I know that this could be an ethical issue with the self-citations, but he asked for it directly. And I had to wonder how many other editors don't ask, but secretly wish that the, reader, that the writer would take time to increase their impact factor. Yes. And number two, also join their conversation by referring to previous authors in that journal. Now, today, when you look at the uh, impact factor, some software will divide the self-citations from other citations, right? They will tell you how many self-cites there are. But most of the time, we don't know that. We just see impact factor. It's one number. We don't know what percentage of that comes from the journal. So editors still have motivation to encourage authors 
to cite their journal when they are joining the conversation. Pick journals like you pick stocks. We want to submit our journal to an impact factor that is rising. The impact factors that are rising are specific journals for specific domains. General journals generally fall. Specific, precise journals will be more highly cited because researchers will read them and cite them more. We look carefully at the biases of the journal. Do they have a wide international range of authors or are they mainly focused on North America, East Coast, MIT, Harvard, Yale, some famous universities? We don't want journals that have heavy biases toward those famous schools or more well-known uh, countries. We'll send some of our papers to high journals and low journals because we want to spread our risk. We don't want, you know, if we get all of our papers in a low journal, we're going to be disappointed. But if we send all of them to the high journal, there's a chance they could all be rejected. So taking a variety of different impact factors is a safer opportunity here. We will record when we send the journals, the papers out. And this is easy in the beginning. But after a while, when you have several papers out, you forget the history of that paper. Also, you forget when you sent it out, so you don't send a reminder to the editor asking him, where's my paper? So as soon as you send a paper out, submit a paper, we make a little mark three months from now on the calendar. Send letter to editor. Four months from now, send two letters to editor. Six months, send letters every day until we hear something back from our editor. How do journals compare to each other? How do we measure the quality of a journal? Well, there are three important numbers that we will watch when we evaluate the quality of a journal. Now, these numbers are produced every year by the Journal Citation Reports. And committees will use these numbers to judge a scholar and to judge his work and to judge his impact. And because people use it to judge us, we also care about these three numbers. The first one's called the TC, total citations. How many total citations in one year does this journal have? Now, some scholars criticize this number. They don't say, they think it's not fair because those journals that are interdisciplinary or have wide distribution or frequent publication will be read more, cited more, because they have more papers every year. So this, no, this number will generally prefer the well-established, frequently published journals. But it's still an important number. Just understand that if you go for the journal that's only published once a year, with a few articles every time, it's going to be a low TC, just because there's not a lot of people reading that. 